The Jets are seven and four with six games remaining in the 2022 regular season. Welcome to the official Jets podcast. We're presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. Let's welcome in my co-host, Bart Scott and Brian Baldinger from NFL Network joins us now. You guys were both on the television show last week, and we had to cut that down. We thought the exchanges were so good. Let's bring them both on the podcast. (laughs) Well, I appreciate the invite. Whenever I can talk to somebody with the football acumen as Baldy, I mean, I think all our, our viewers and listeners are better for it. Well, I think with Jet fans saw a lot of good football acumen yesterday from a particular quarterback, Bart, that I'm sure we're probably going to get to at some point during this podcast. Who would that be? <laughs> See? Inquiring Baldy, minds. Uh, Baldy, you know a lot about this team. Uh, what do they show you overall? We don't have to start with Mike White, but what do they show you overall taking down an overmatched team in the Chicago Bears in the manner in which they did it 31-10? to 10? Well, it's it's been a constant story all year long that the next guy up, you know, I mean, you lose Brees Hall, you lose uh, James, you know, Robinson, you lose Michael Carter during the game, and here comes Donovan Knight, you know, and gave him a really good game, both running and receiving. I mean, you lose your right tackle, Cedric Aboye, here comes the rookie Max Mitchell in their right tackle. I mean, it's it seems like, you know, they can't go through a game without losing players, which happens in this league. But, you know, they overcame all of that yesterday, and it didn't affect the quarterback at all. So I think the bigger – The bigger story here is that, you know, this is a 53-man team, and whoever's up, they're counting on them. And in most weekends and in most cases, these guys have stepped up. That was a big that was a big spot for Zonovan Knight. I know it wasn't a great defense. It was the Bears and all that kind of stuff, but I he showed us all a little bit yesterday. I mean, I think you you hit the nail on the head when you talk about roster building, right? And you know, I think in today's NFL, like I say all the time, it's much better to have a bunch of good players and have a couple of great players because inevitably it's a battle of attrition. And we see this going over throughout the league. I mean, the Dolphins have to be concerned with with Armstead right now. You think about the Bucs, they have to be worried about Worth, right? You know, but the Jets, they just continue to plug and play because they've done a great job in in making sure that it's quality players on this team from top to bottom. And instead of going out and spending a bunch of money on a couple of players, they spent good money on a guy, a lot of quality players and, and when they didn't spend the money, they went out and used draft capital and used their their football acumen and identifying who will be good for this scheme. So you see them you're really enduring a lot of injuries and being able to still continue to compete. And now, you know, it's wide open. They put themselves in a good position. You know, I know losing to, to New England hurt. They had an opportunity to be in and in solidly. But um, they, they'll be able to have a chance to take care of business against the Dolphins and the Bills as the injuries continue to mount up for them, whether it's Von Miller or their left tackle, two really pivotal positions on their team. Let's see if they can withstand it. And we understand here with the Jets, much like when Brees Hall and Vera Tucker went down, it takes a couple of weeks to adjust to the new personnel that you have. Baldy, how well did this organization handle everything last week? Robert Sala coming out on Monday saying everything is on the table at the quarterback position. On Wednesday, he formally makes the announcement that Mike White is going to be the starting quarterback in that second-year signal caller, Zach Wilson, needed a reset. And then the team goes out there on Sunday, takes care of business. And C.J. Mosley saying after the game, I really appreciate the way – Sala talks to us as a group. He gives us the messaging first. He's honest with us. And you heard from Zach Wilson last week. He also said this is a humbling experience that he can grow from. Well, you know, everybody gets humbled in this business. You know, I don't care if you're the second pick in the draft, if it's injuries, if you get benched, everybody gets humbled at some point. I mean, it's rare that you're Tom Brady or somebody like that. Most people have to overcome adversity. And it's almost better if you have it happen early in your career. The one thing you have to appreciate about Robert Sala and this whole thing is he, he's going to inform his team first. His team's going to know about it before anybody else. And that's the way it should be. It shouldn't be through the media. It shouldn't be through the press. It shouldn't be through some, you know, some other people's podcast. It happens in the team meeting. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to make this, this change at this position. He's going to let the players know who are changing. And you can't ask for anything more than that as a player. And as far as Zach goes, like, 
the last thing he needs to do at this point in early in his career is hang his head. He just needs to look at things and go and look only in the mirror. What can I do to improve? Because if a player isn't asking that about himself, I don't care where he's drafted, what his status is, how much money he makes. If a player isn't looking in the mirror at himself and saying, how can I get better for this team? Then you're not asking the right questions. Bart, why is Mike White making this look so easy with his first starts? First start of his NFL career last year came against the Bengals, passed for 405. The Jets win 34-31, and here against the Bears, he passes for more than 300 yards with three touchdowns and zero, zero interceptions. And I thought, guys, one of the most important parts to that game is the Jets got off to a fast start. That's the first time this year that the Jets took the opening possession, went down the field, and scored a touchdown. I mean, I think Mike White is showing you that, you know, the game is played – you know, 80% above the shoulders, right? Because a lot of the things that he's done is about having pre-snap recognition. And what you see with this offense is the ball comes out on time. And having 10 receivers, you know, catch passes means that the ball isn't going to somebody that he's locking in on. It's going to where the defense dictates the ball should go. And they're all friendly balls. And sometimes we overcomplicate things and thinking it's about, you know, the quarterback. You know, when we say game manager, it's not a bad thing. What we're saying is, is managing a situation, knowing when to be aggressive, knowing when not to, and not putting the ball in harm's way. You know, he put the ball where his receivers can run with it and get yak. Understand that he has talented receivers that can make people miss in space. And we saw examples of that. And, you know, the ball coming out with pre-snap recognition, understanding when it's cover zero, cover one, cover three, where the holes and the weakness is, is a skill. And maybe Mike White is benefiting from the fact that he's been humbled before. Right. He was a guy that was drafted fifth round and a guy that was cut. So he understands. So he has that grit. So he has this second opportunity. He's making the best of it. I was a starter when I came in this league. A lot of people don't know that I started on the dime package. I was a starting dime for the Baltimore Ravens. By week four, I was benched and it took me three more seasons to get another opportunity to prove that I was ready for the opportunity. And I never looked back from there. I mean, I, I, I you know, was listening to the pregame show on ESPN and I heard you know, Matt Hasselbeck's talking about when he got benched after he was brought out there to be the guy, right? So what Zach Wilson has to, you know, for Trent Dilfer, what he needs to realize is this is a familiar story for a lot of guys that, you know, has fallen down but decided to get back up. You know, I say all the time, you know, adversity doesn't define character, it reveals it. So this situation is going to reveal a, a lot about Zach Wilson to his fans, but ultimately it's going to reveal a lot to himself. Uh, Baldy. Mike White's had an interesting career and an interesting year. You think about it, the Jets have started three different quarterbacks this year, and at the beginning of the season, White was number three. Then he got elevated to number two, and now he's the guy who potentially could finish the season as the Jets quarterback. Well, that is true. Um, you know, the, the thing is, is that I think he is. I think he's always looking to learn. You know, he's a guy that, you know, transferred to Western Kentucky. He was at another school. He was a great baseball player growing up in Fort Lauderdale. He was a high school phenom. He's had success at different levels. So, you know, it's not like he hasn't been successful. I know we had a couple games last year. We looked really good. But I just think that some guys are just ready for the moment because they prepared for the moment. And I feel like even when he wasn't active, when Joe Flacco was a starter and he wasn't – you're going to get any action. He wasn't get. I think he was probably, you know, looking at uh, whether it's scout team and practice or film sessions. I think he was always preparing for this moment. And so that when he gets this chance, it doesn't look like he's raw or not ready. He looks ready. I mean, that was an impressive opening drive going down the field with quick, accurate decisions. And really, you know, they've got a good offense with a lot of different personnel and spacing and I thought it was a really good game plan where he wasn't taking seven step drops the ball was coming out fast and guys like to Bart's point if you hit it in the right spot you know to Elijah Moore he can go a long ways if you get it you know to Zonovan Knight on the outside as your check down he can go a long ways these guys are capable of making people misses and so I just thought he's probably taken all of his time away from not being on the field and made the most of it. That's what it looked like. Cause I don't think that you could have just, 
you know, been snoozing over the last three months and go out there and play like that. How important were those two receptions by Elijah Moore that Baldy just referred to there, Bart? What can it do for his confidence? And if you have him going added to the equation with Garrett Wilson and you brought Corey Davis back to the lineup, suddenly this passing game can look a lot different, can it? Absolutely, because you don't know who to take away. If you decide to double uh, Garrett Wilson, then it allows you to get Elijah Moore, who thrives in a slot. And I think that's his natural position. I think that's where he can best help this team. I like to see them maybe get him involved more. Some of those, you know, carries from Barrios, give him some of those, you know, those jet sweeps because he he really flourished with those last year. But, you know, it just makes it the team harder to to be able to defend. And it gives you an opportunity, guys, that can give you explosive plays. When you think about, you know, you lost a lot of that from Brees Hall because he was a guy that can give you 40 yards or 60 yards explosive plays, you know, with relatively safe type of plays. But now you look at Elijah Moore, Elijah Moore, now his confidence is back. And now he believes that, OK, if I get the ball in my hands, if I'm open, that the ball is going to be delivered to me. So now that chemistry just continues to grow with Mike White. And listen, Mike White, you know, last year, this whole like everybody's going to say, well, it was against the Bears and that was an easy defense. He did it against the Bengals after the Bengals beat up on the Ravens. You know, they came in here and got humbled by the Jets. And, you know, that was because Mike White had a career day. So for everybody that says, oh, it's not a, it's a fluke, look who he did it against. He did it against great competition last year, and he started off on Monday Night Football doing it against the Colts before he got injured. So, like, to me, this is something that we can count on. We can count on quick decisions, you know, trying to take care of the football. And everybody wants to talk about, oh, well, you know, the, the, the interceptions that he had last year. That's because there was a lot of tips. Those were tip balls. So that just tells me that people looked at the box score. They didn't actually see the game. I saw the game. So I believe that you can believe in Mike White and you can count on it. And you don't have to be great when you have a defense like this and you have a good special teams and the special teams are going to continue to be a bigger part of the game as the weather continues to get bad, field position, and being able to flip the field defensively into a special team is going to be key to make it easy to put points on the board. Well, Baldy, you know this. Bart was saying on the television show last week that – the Jets should be very thankful for what they have on the outside with Sauce Gardner and DJ Reed. The Bears made a couple plays in the passing game, and when that actually happens, it's a surprise because these guys have been so good. What do you think about the response from the Jets? They give up 10 early points, then they slam the door, and that's it. And they went after those guys after that, and neither one of those guys got beat. I mean, they both gave up a play. Uh, early in that game that led to the 10 points. I mean, we have not seen Sauce uh, panic at all with the ball in the air, no matter who he was covering. But Claypool, uh, for whatever reason, I mean, he was in good position. He just uh, didn't play it right. And that's uh, that can happen to any corner. I don't care if your name is Darrell Rivas or anybody. That can happen to anybody. Uh, the good thing is, you know, it, and then DJ got beat, you know, for a touchdown. He was right in perfect position, you know, to make the play. He just didn't make it. Byron Pringle did. And so, you know, in those situations – what you want for any young player is to not let that affect them going forward. And neither player was affected going forward. They both made plays after that, like they like were kind of accustomed to seeing. And the other thing about both those players is they're very, very good in the run game and in tackling. I mean, both of them will use, I mean, I've heard, you know, Bart Rex Ryan say, look, I don't care if my corners tackle. I got nine other guys got to go make that tackle. But I like my corners that go up there and put their nose into things. And that's what DJ and Sauce do. They did it yesterday. And so, look, one play in a game against a, a quarterback that they hadn't watched at all, you know, in, in any in any sort of tape, what kind of a goal ball they throw. Claypool's just new there. I mean, I'm not making any excuses for these guys. But, you know, they may give, give up a play. They're going to give up a play uh, next week to Justin Jefferson. It's going to happen. How do you respond to those plays after it happens? I can't wait for this matchup, Bart. Jets going to Minnesota. The Vikings one of the league surprises, I would say, at 9-2. and two. They've won so many games in the fourth quarter. We've talked about the Jets' success in the fourth quarter throughout the year. I think the Vikings might be 8-0 in one possession games. Baldy just talked about Justin Jefferson. So let's get right into it. Where would you put the Vikings' skill position players if you were ranking them in the National Football League? How do you think – the Jets match up with this group. Delvin Cook, they trade for TJ Hawkinson, they got Justin Jefferson, they got Adam Thielen, 
And of course, uh, Kirk Cousins is the guy at the center of that thing at the quarterback position. Well, you know, with Kirk Cousins, the ball is going to come out on time. You know, he's got some football acumen. He's going to, you know, understand when you you rolling those safeties over and he got cover three. He's going to know that he has man to man on the backside. And if that guy is Justin Jefferson, the ball is going to him. And you know, in this matchup, the 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 Vikings are going to be able to dictate matchups because the Jets play left and right. So depending on you know how, what matchups they want, you know, whether it's Thielen on this side or Jefferson against a particular corner, you know we know that they're going to be able to get that. And the Jets are going to do what they do best. And it's going to be important for them to really you know put a lot of pressure with the four, right, and be able to double. And you know somebody's going to get the heavy lifting, but you have to make sure that it's a not a, a steady dose where they can get predictable about being able to get the matchups. I like Michael Carter in this as well. So Dalvin Cook is an explosive back, but the Jets don't struggle with the backs that's kind of built like him. They struggle with the backs like uh, Montgomery and Stevenson, the guys that bounce off and make the Jets miss a lot of tackles. You know, Dalvin Cook is a powerful runner, but he's not a guy with that similar body, that body type. Hawkinson is going to be interesting because, you know, I think you, you know, he's a guy that they thought that they needed in this system. And um, he's a guy that can hurt you. You know, he's a guy you know, like Kittles who can get vertical, but he's, t- you know, he, he, he's a, he's a pass receiving tight end. So it's going to be some interesting matchups and you're going to have to do some things that maybe you haven't shown on film. And, but one thing they're going to have to consistently do is get after this team with four rushers. And I think they can do that, especially if Derrishaw isn't a hundred percent or if he's not back for this game. WinBet is bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting and casino play. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports. From boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport, they have what you need to win. Jets fans in New Jersey, sign up today and use promo code XJETS. And after placing your first $100 wager, you will receive $100 to bet with. You will receive a $50 free bet and a $50 casino bonus. Again, the promo code is XJETS. Offer subject to change. Offer only available in New Jersey. Terms and conditions apply. You must be 21 or older to participate. Please visit winbet.com to view welcome offers available in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. Yeah, Baldy, you're living in the film room. What do you think? early in the week here as we look ahead to the Jets defense playing at such an elite level against a Minnesota offense that has so many players that can make plays happen with the ball in their hands and they make clutch plays as well. Justin Jefferson, what do you think? Top receiver in the league right now? Well, he's as good as anybody out there. You know, the the thing about Justin Jefferson, he's he's got two plans. He's got a plan to get open and then he's got a plan once he catches the ball to get busy and to gain as many yards or get to the end zone as he can. Like mean, he's, he's a difference maker. Look, the whole key to this thing is how can you affect Kirk Cousins? I mean, you just take a page out of Rex Ryan's book. You affect the quarterback, you're going to affect this game. The two games that they lost this year, Kirk Cousins has been affected. He threw three interceptions against the Eagles, one in the red zone, a horrible throw. But he was under pressure. You've got to pressure Kirk Cousins. You can pressure him. He can throw up two to the Jets during this game if the pressure is is applied. And he's not that much different than a lot of quarterbacks. But that's why he has not been successful in big, big games and in the postseason because the pressure is going to be much bigger. And to me, that's going to be the key to this game. Um, you know, I saw C.J. Mosley force a, you know, a sack by Bryce Hufflash, uh yesterday just by stepping into the A-gap and drawing the guard tackle down. I saw him go to a five-man defense line that led to a – a sack early in the game. I mean, I think you have to change it up a little bit. I don't think you can just rush four all the time. I think you got to try some overloads, give them some different looks, give them, to, you know, get them to go max protection and limit the number of options for Cousins to go down the field to. But, you know, by and large, this team is built around the front four and, you know, they got to earn their money in this game up in Minnesota. And so to me, it's about getting hits on Kirk Cousins early. The earlier, the better. Because any of these quarterbacks are all the same. You hit them early, they're going to give it to you late. And to me, that's what I'd be preaching all week long. Bart, do you like those matchup advantages up front along the line of scrimmage for the Jets defensively? No, especially if, if Darashaw is not, not healthy. I mean, you talk about being able to run some games with Quinnen and, and, and Carl on the other side. 
you know, and, and the Jets, you know, they do it in waves, right? I love when Huff comes off. He's kind of like the closer, but they they put him in a little earlier. And I do get concerned opposite of Quentin Williams, you know, without Sheldon Rankins there. You know, you you don't have a lot of veteran, you know, leadership there. Solomon Thomas is 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 there, but he's not a big heavy guy. So you look think about, you know, them maybe trying to isolate those matchups and get movement off the line of scrimmage for Dalvin Cook. But they're gonna have to make them one dimensional. They're gonna have to stop the run and, and make them one dimensional. And that that's a team thing. You know, because if the offense gets up, then they, they'll abandon the run like most teams do to try and catch up. And that's when you have opportunities for Kirk Cousins to throw you one. And you know, the goal is always to get up by two scores and then dictate the rules of engagement for the opposing team. Kirk Cousins is not um, one of these mobile quarterbacks that are going to take off. He's going to be in the pocket. You, you know where he's going to be. And if you can get him off his spot, rather than, you know, they ran a couple of fish hooks last week where the, you know, the opposite DN goes underneath and the other uh, the defender gets wide. And, you know, Kirk Cousins can be affected that way as well getting in his face and getting him on the ground early, make him start seeing goals or, well, that's something that we can't use with the Jets anymore. Um, <laughs> make, him, make him panic. Let's go there. That, uh, that just brought up bad memories. That was <laughs> a few years ago. Hey, let's flip it to the other side of the ball, though, Baldy. The Vikings are winning, but statistically, they're giving up a ton defensively, and they're really not getting to the quarterback either. First year in that new system with the 3-4. They got the veteran safeties back there. They do have good players, but when you're looking at them, uh, where they are as a unit, where do you think the Jets can get after the Vikings' defense? Well, I think you got to run at them. You know, they don't have a lot of big bodies inside. Um, but, you know, look, Zadarius Smith, DJ Wanham, Daniil Hunter, I wouldn't, I wouldn't underestimate any of those guys. Zadarius can line up anywhere on the field. Uh, he's going to pick his matchups. They kind of let him go freelance quite a bit. Uh, he might find the weakness in what he thinks the Jets' offense line is, where that might be. I don't know. Maybe it's Lake and Tomlinson, but he can line up over the center, guards, tackles, um, really anywhere. And he can win one on ones. He's he's really good. Daniil Hunter is a good power rusher. Uh, DJ Wanham is, you cannot underestimate. Uh, and so, look, uh, I think they're a quality group. I don't care what their numbers say. I mean, they have guys that can get home and get to the quarterback and can affect it. I've seen it throughout the season. Um, I think Zedarius is capable of leading this league in sacks one year. If he just, you know, just gets the opportunities to do it just because of his style. He's got a unique style. He's a slap and, you know, run around guy, uh, but he also has some power. So, look, uh, you know, Eric Hendricks is about as uh, a sound, a middle linebacker as there is. And yeah. and so, uh, you know, I, I, I think that they've got good players. I mean, they might have some young corners out there. I, I, every time I look at the right corner position, looks like there's a new guy out there right now. Uh, you know, I, I kind of find out who's out there and if they can hold up out there in that spot. Hey, Bart, what is White going to be seeing when he looks at those safeties? The two guys have seen it all on Harrison Smith and then Patrick yeah. Peterson, of course. Yeah, Harrison Smith is a, a pro's pro. I mean, he's a guy that's played in this league at a high level, you know, for a very long time. He's a playmaker and he's, he's the, he's the, air traffic controller back there. So they're going, you know, they're going to have to come at them. Patrick Peterson, even though, you know, he's playing safety, he really doesn't have a lot of experience there, um, but he's smart. He knows it from the corner position. You know, he's, he's been one of the, the corners that have made that transition. When you think about Charles Woodson, Rod Woodson, you know, guys that have been able to, you know, ex- extend their career by playing, you know, the safety position after they slow down a little bit. But um, you, you, you got to come up there and you got you to have a sound plan and um, you got to try and get him in space, right? Kendrick is is has played at a high level for a long time as well. Yeah, I've been, I'm a personal um, you know fan of his. I, I love the way he plays, the tenacity. Him and his brother always brought a little grit to the game. But you got to you got to go and you got to make it a physical contest as well. You can't abandon the run. You have to set everything off of the run. They understand, you know, really that Mike White's going to get the ball out. So they understand it. They may flat foot. So it's going to be important for you to take some shots to try and loosen them up early on. I don't know if that's a Corey Davis, that's a Mims. You know what I mean? But I think, you know, you got to come with some unique um, formations and personnel to keep them guessing. And, you know, I would love for them to go into this game. And it's a hostile environment, but to take them out of the game to kind of with some up-tempo stuff, especially when you come out with your 15-play script, to be able to just kind of change some things up just to kind of, you know, make them not see what you're trying to put in front of their eyes. Well, I got my eyes on Tyler Conklin going back to Minnesota this ball game. He's 
one of Kirk Cousins' top targets last year. And you're watching that game on Thanksgiving. Uh, I know uh, uh, styles make fights, but the Patriots, Mac Jones and Hunter Henry, they had some success thrown to the tight end. So I think maybe Tyler Conklin can get going after his former teammates. Well, I think when the Vikings study uh, the Jets' victory against the Bears, they're going to be impressed by how both Tyler Conklin and C.J. Uzama blocked. I mean, those outside zones and their ability to just seal the edge and really kind of do combo blocks up to the next level, they were excellent. And even the hit screen out to Garrett Wilson that ended up leading to a you know an eventual touchdown, I mean, they they were they looked like they were really enjoying themselves blocking. They both were effective in the pass game. Uh, I thought Tyler Conklin was excellent last year as a starting tight end, um, especially when Irv Smith went down early and he carried him. And so, you know, he's familiar with that defense. He's familiar, even though that they've had a coaching change, he's familiar with the personnel that's there. It hasn't changed all that much from a year ago. So there's some things that he might be able to help out game plan wise. But, you know, I think the combination and the the tandem of him and CJ is excellent right now in the run and pass game. All right, big picture, guys. The Jets are entering December playing meaningful football. Bart, Jets fans, who should they be rooting for Thursday night when the Bills play the New England Patriots? You got the Bills who are eight and three, but the Patriots right behind you, nipping in your heels at six and five. And I know you have to take care of your own business. I'm talking about from a fan's perspective. Who are you rooting for there? I mean, I'm I'm rooting for New England to beat the Bills because I have dreams of winning the division. So I, I think it's wide open. You know, let's see how they adjust for not having Von Miller. But I want I want them to I want I want them to lose. So then I see them and I'll take care of my business so I can guarantee that's two. I'm done with New England, right? I can't do anything else to affect New England. Yep. I want the Bills to lose so then I can take care of business. And that's two losses, which would make me be ahead of them. And also when I see Miami, if I can do that again, then we win a division. We win a division. You know, you got an opportunity to get an opponent that is not a top seat. And that should always be the goal. That keeps you away from Kansas City early and allows you to kind of get used to playing in the postseason and maybe even hosting a game at home. How about that? I love that thinking. Baldy, what's your take on it? Well, I feel like if New England takes care of business against Buffalo, Buffalo's officially reeling. Um, you know, they have not played well. Uh, they don't look nearly as explosive as they did in the first half of the season. Um, you know, I, I think that if they would lose to New England right here, I think the confidence that I saw from this team from training camp uh, when I was up there in Rochester through the start of the season, that I, I would think that they would begin to have some doubts, some real doubts about just who they are. And because the quarterback doesn't look nearly as aggressive as he once was, where he looked like he was the best player in the league for the first half of the season. And then the turnovers, then the kind of lead on the run game, then to kind of take the ball out of his hands. Like, I think this could do a real number on the Buffalo Bills as, you know, the Jets get ready to, you know, to, to take them on here pretty soon. So right after Minnesota. So I, if I was the Jets, I, I, like, I think the Patriots, even though they've beaten them twice, I, I think that if you would meet them again in the postseason, if that would happen, I don't think the Jets would fear New England at all if they would get near them again. Bart, is this going to be a defining two weeks for the Jets going to Minnesota than going to Buffalo? Yeah, I mean, I think this is if, if we can take them seriously. Now, they let one get away with New England, but if they're able to take care of business, I think they put the league on notice, right? You, because you're beating two teams that you know are going to be in a postseason, and, you know, they can ride that momentum and that wave. It's not about who's the best team. It's about who's playing the best at the right time. And this is the time where – you have your identity and you know how you want to try and win football games going forward. And it's about executing the game plan. And because the Jets have so much depth, they may be one of the most healthier teams, even though they're going to be without Barry Tucker, or Brees Hall. But they have good backups. They have guys coming back. Max Mitchell was able to step in. Listen, injuries aren't going to stop mounting up in the last, in the last six weeks. They're going to keep happening. But the Jets are equipped and they're going to get some of their hurt players back. Right. So they dealt with their adversity. Some teams are just starting to deal with the adversity. Right. Buffalo has been relatively healthy outside of the safety position. Now, with Von Miller being hurt, that was their uh, horse whisperer, their Super Bowl whisperer. And now they're going to have to adjust without having a guy that's one of the best closers in the game. 
and that's going to take a, a while in a period. Let's see if they won't reel from that, right? And you look at Miami, you know, reeling as well from maybe Armstead being out and now concerns with the protection of, of Tua. Does that change the way they, you know, throw the football? Does that mean that now it's three-step drops, not these long, you know, bombs down the field? And how does that affect the way they go about business, their run game and their passing game? The Jets are fine. They know that they can withstand almost any injury, you know, and be fine because they have tremendous depth. And that's the plus that they have in this division that the other teams don't have the luxury of having. Baldy, when it's all said and done, you think three teams out of AFC East make the playoffs? I don't see anybody in the West, you know, putting anybody beside, you know, Kansas City in there. I don't see anybody in the South putting anybody beside Tennessee in there. And so then you're looking at, you know, does Cincinnati and Baltimore, you know, can they can I guy kind of go head to head here and probably put two in there? You know, and if that's the case, if they do, that's three from the East that are going to go in, you know, with the records that they have, unless, you know, one or two of these teams fall apart down the stretch, which I don't really see happening, but it's a tough stretch for the Jets right now. They're going to find out an awful lot about themselves. It, it, and that can work both ways. You know, you beat both these teams or at least show really well, go one-on-one on the road against these two teams. For as young as the Jets are, I mean, that's just going to build confidence in the entire organization that they can go toe-to-toe with these teams that are expected to play January football. And you just seem, I mean, I know we, we kind of glossed over it, but to see how excited Elijah Moore was when he scored his first touchdown yesterday, those are the type of moments with a young player that they could build on and they could say, I can do this against Buffalo. I can do this against Minnesota. I don't care what the name of the jerseys are and you know where these games are being played. Young players – feed off and, and veteran players feed off of young players that are excited and they kind of don't know what they don't know, which is not a good, bad thing. They're just excited. And they kind of give the entire team a jolt. I saw Elijah Moore run off that field with that ball. Like it was his only touchdown he's ever scored in his life. And we know that's not true. So that's, that's what's in front of these young kids for the jets. And we also know how capable he is because we've seen it. So he doesn't have a level of fear because last year he did that. He took care of business and he coming into this season was supposed to be one of the brightest spots on the offense. It hasn't materialized, but it's never too late. And, it's, you know, it looks like he's got on a roll. And if he can get that going, man, the Jets become so much more difficult to be able to defend. And that opens everything up because you're going to be putting your, you know, number two receiver trying to bracket him, you know, you know, in the slot, being able to have easy access, being off the ball being able to determine and go left and right and, you know, determine matchups, then, you know, that just clears the table for, you know, Corey Davis. Oh, yeah, that guy, right, you know, to get the third best corner or get the less attention and get one-on-one matchups that he can exploit as he's getting more healthy. And what a good job by Denzel Mims kind of holding the fort. And then you just got to say, hey, Mims has earned the right to be up over um, Smith. So now, you know, he can get in there, hey, kid, can you give me a good over route? You know, we wore these corners out. They're tired. You know, they haven't played against you, and you get to go out there with a different body type, a big, long body type. And let's see if you can go catch the old nine ball. Hey, subscribe, rate, and review. Give us a like on the YouTube as well. Baldy, thanks for joining myself and the Matt Backer today, brother. Uh, always good to be with you guys, man. Bart, be good. Let's uh, let's see if the Jets can get on a roll here at the right time of the year, man. It's uh this is the stretch run right here. It's when you got to play your best football. And you got off to a good start last Sunday, man. I'm excited to watch it this weekend. Absolutely.